Aaron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Last Thursday was a tragic day in Dunedin, and it was a tragic day for our skilled workforce in this nation. Last Thursday, 41 skilled jobs were announced as being made redundant. 41 skilled jobs in the critical area of manufacturing in this country, which is the bedrock of our workforce and the bedrock of our rail engineering business. 41 skilled jobs will go. 41 families will be affected. 41 incomes paying tax will be lost to the local economy, tax lost to the country. 41 potential extra additions to the dole queue in, in Dunedin. And for what? When Stephen Joyce said today on behalf of the Prime Minister that there had been no analysis done by his government of the, la of the lost income, GST and extra cost of benefits caused by his government's decision to have these layoffs, it just, it's just extraordinary. And yet, in the budget a few weeks ago, we heard that by both the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance, that somehow, miraculously, there were going to be 170,000 new jobs created in this economy over the next four years. When the Acting Minister of Economic Development was put on the spot about this last week in the Commerce Select Committee and asked where are those jobs coming from, what analysis has been done by him or his department on what sectors they would come from, the answer was we haven't done one. We don't know. We just think it's going to happen. <coughs> so what we have is jobs lost in rail engineering, in Kiwi Rail, and we have mythical jobs supposedly being created. Dunedin has been lied to. When the Minister of Transport, Stephen Joyce, said last Thursday in this House, asked about those Kiwi Rail job losses, he said Kiwi Rail must be able to operate without political interference, despite promising last May that there would be plenty of jobs for the workers at Hillside. And this also directly contradicted Kiwi Rail's Chief Executive Officer, Jim Quinn, who has been consistently going around saying that he has to take that narrow commercial focus because of government policy. So somebody is not telling the truth here. Either it is government policy or it isn't that Kiwi Rail takes a narrow commercial approach, isn't interested in the economic flow-on effects to the local economy, to the New Zealand economy, of investing taxpayers' money in those jobs and in that industry. And it makes a mockery of the attempts in Dunedin for the last 18 months by a group of committed people, including the City Council, the Chamber of Commerce, the engineering cluster of nearly 70, 70 firms in Dunedin, of all of the MPs, um, and of the rail union and of Kiwi Rail itself until it basically got gagged to sit around and try and come up with a strong economic case for keeping work in Dunedin, for keeping rail engineering business in this country. A mockery. And what has happened since those, those um, redundancies have been announced? The local National Party List MP has been strangely silent. He sat around that table. He said he said he was committed. He said he was taking the case to Wellington. Well, where is the evidence of that case being taken to Wellington? And where's the evidence of the government listening at all? No evidence at all. It's been intent the whole time, and it's been obvious for two and a half years that this government is not committed to those workshops, is not committed to rail engineering business in this country, and will and basically wants to get rid of it and will get rid of it, and it is government policy. These Kiwi Rail won't guarantee the future of the rail workshops. Instead, they've clearly signalled there's no future for a rail engineering model that's about building and refurbishing our rolling stock. Any jobs that will remain will be maintenance and repair. 
probably not in Dunedin. Where is the local National Party member Order. on this Order. issue? Order. Mr. Mr Chairman. Call Chris Hopkins. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Mr Chairman, there's a bit of a double standard uh, operating in this government, one which says that they're willing to intervene when the, when the interests of their corporate mates are at risk. But when it comes to protecting Kiwi jobs, they are totally and utterly absent, and they don't give a stuff about it. Because, Mr, and Mr, Mr Chairman, no, no better example exists than the way they are treating Kiwi Rail. And I speak as a resident of the Hutt Valley, where we have one of the two major rail workshops in the country, the Woburn Railway Workshops. And those workers at the Woburn Order. Workshops... Order. Just remind the member. Uh, we're not talking about Kiwi Rail. We're talking about the Railways Corporation. So just focus in on the Railways Corporation. That's not Kiwi Rail. Thank you. Chris Thank Hopkins. you very much, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Happy to speak about the New Zealand Railways Corporation and the government's lack of commitment to rail in general in this country. Because in this year's budget, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, no relief was provided to rail. In fact, we treat rail in this country entirely differently to the way we treat to the way we treat roads in this country. We expect we ex we put financial constraints on rail that we simply don't put on our roading system. And that's one of the reasons why, the, why rail in this country is, a, is facing such a tough time. We have already seen lines being closed in provincial New Zealand because of this government. The Stratford line has already been mothballed. The Napier to Gisborne line is at risk. Auckland to Whangarei, the Northern Wairarapa line, all at risk under this government because this government simply don't want to invest in rail. Because they're quite happy to go out and provide corporate subsidies to uh, the, the people who they support and who support them, but they're not willing to intervene to protect New Zealand jobs and to protect Kiwi jobs and to make sure that investment and in infrastructure stays in New Zealand and to make sure that we put that investment to good use. Rail provides an amazing opportunity to invest not only in New Zealand jobs but in the future of the New Zealand workforce. We should be building trains locally here in New Zealand and using the opportunity of building those trains to train the future workforce of this country. Now, I know Wayne Mack thinks it's hilarious that New Zealand would actually back New Zealand workers and New Zealand jobs. I know that's a point of humour for the national government because they don't actually believe in that. They would much rather have those jobs exported off to China rather than actually invest in, in, in uh, buying locally and in supporting the local economy. Uh, Mr Chair, I want to talk about the fact that the rail system is vital to our economic future as a country. We can't have every piece of freight on road and we can't simply uh, restrict ourselves to the main trunk line, which is what this government wants to do. The main trunk line through the centre of the North Island and the inter-island ferries are all this government are interested in supporting. Uh, I think we actually need a more comprehensive vision for rail than that. New Zealand's engineering and manufacturing expertise is being lost because of the lack of vision by this government. New Zealand should do what other successful economies do. Other successful economies around the world back themselves, back their own workers, and they use the power of government procurement for the benefit of their own countries and their own economies. Why is it that we in New Zealand aren't willing to do that? Why is this government not willing to back Kiwi workers, back the Kiwi economy? It is purely ideological. They're willing to put our laws and regulations up for sale. They're willing to put our laws and regulations uh, and, and for the corporate mates for Warner Brothers, uh, for the Sky City. Uh, they're willing to do that for the film industry and for the gambling industry, but they're not willing to back the workers who work in, the, in rail in this country, and I think that's frankly disgraceful, Mr Speaker. New Zealanders, New Zealand workers should be given a fair go. I don't think we should be exporting jobs offshore. I think it's time to say enough is enough. We hold ourselves up as this virtuous country because we uh, simply won't do any, make any steps to protect New Zealand jobs. I don't think that's good enough, and I think we should start in the rail industry, and I think we should start by protecting the workers at Hillside, by protecting the workers at Woburn, by building the new trains that are needed, the new wagons that are needed, we should build them locally. We have the skilled workforce here in New Zealand. We, our workshops can compete if they are given the opportunity to compete. It can be an economically successful 
option. This government simply aren't willing to consider that. They're willing to intervene to prop up the film to Warner Brothers and to prop up Sky City, but they're not willing to do anything to protect the jobs in the rail industry in this country. That's a disgrace. I call Amy Adams. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'm very happy to take a call.